Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing some, what am I doing? Some art practice. So I'm going to, um, if you've watched my video on my 50 paintings challenge, I'm going to be doing, I think I'm like halfway through, so 25 paintings in. So I'm going to try and get a couple of paintings done. It's 11 o'clock in the morning, so on a Friday. So I'm just going to try and get a couple of paintings in for my project and I will show you I wasn't going to film but I thought I might I might as well just film some of it because these are the type of things that I do actually want to put on my channel so I'm gonna show you my setup and then I'm going to get set up and then I'm not going to do like film me paint because I haven't got the um the setup for it my camera's run out of battery and it's just a whole palaver to set up so what I'll do is I'll just pop in with updates on how I'm doing with the painting and how far I get and what I, I'll just talk through it basically um so yeah and show you in between what I'm doing so um yeah just a kind of relaxed painting vlog I suppose so yeah let me show you my setup right so as I said I am going to um just I'm just going to do this on the dining room table basically so I've laid down because I don't want to make a big thing out of it because I just want to get started but um because I don't have loads of time today and I would like to get at least probably about two done hopefully and the thing is I've, I've got four of these left so I actually do need to buy some more of these so the canvas board I'm going to use is um I think this is eight by eight um inches if I remember rightly I can't see the yeah, eight by eight inches I use for this project and it's for acrylic and oil, so Loxley canvas board, any kind of canvas board really. Um, Winsor & Newton are my favourite, but I think I got these from the art discount store. Uh, yeah, so it's art discount store and at a reasonable price, so I think I'm just going to buy some more. Um, so the paintings we are going to be doing today so <clears throat> i'll link my 50 painting challenge down below and um, it is a recent video so you could probably just find it if you look through um so i'm not going to go through too much because you can you can watch that video but this is the one this is my little bookmark i've actually had this for, for a very long time this little card i think i got it from like a second hand shop or something but i've had it for like a lot of years but i think it's so cute anyway so I'm up to this painting 26. So it's, I mean, it's not that the most interesting painting, but what it is, it's you're practicing large shapes and small details. So basically you're just learning different, different aspects of painting with acrylics. So this is, so yeah, so the, the finished painting will look like this and the materials, so you've got your materials list. So I'll get my, material lists to my ugh, my materials together color palette um i should have all of these colors and then once you have all this assembled then all you do is you just follow through the steps um you follow through the steps to create the painting basically you can add your own touches on some of the paintings i've kind of done a bit more detailed than it actually has said or you know I, I have put my own twist on some of the paintings that I've done for this challenge because they're very ba they're very basic because it's not about the actual picture it's about the technique this project so yeah you can add a bit more like see where well this is quite dark you could add in a bit more like highlights and stuff like that but I'm not sure if I'll do that today because um I want to get a couple done and then this one is a very basic simplified landscape of a snow scene so it's very simplified so look at that so but these are like the foundations that you need to learn um when you're learning about painting and painting with, with uh, a medium so you know you just go with it like i say you could always add some more details if you're doing this um i've done this one already so and i've showed it in my video so right let me get set up and oh so the brushes i use are hog hair brushes and um, so yeah, these are the brushes that I use for acrylic painting, that is. So I've got my different sizes there. I also use a tear-off palette 
or acrylic painting because it's easy clean up just use it when i finish with it fold it up and put it in the bin um so yeah and then i have a spray bottle so if the acrylic start, paint starts to dry i just give it a light spray i have actually got a smaller actual mist bottle i'll show you that um to just spray over the paints which it comes out more of a finer mist i can't if it's here um i'll show it to you when i've set up so yeah let me get set up and i will get back to you okay so um i've got my paints out so the acrylic paints that i use are the Dela focus daily Rowney system free acrylics i just like the texture of the paint i always use them and um, so i've got all my colors and the color the color palette where are we um this unbleached titanium is the cream color at the back here and i don't have unbleached titanium so basically i've just got to mix up a cream color which i'll just use some titanium white with a dash of cadmium yellow just to get like a cream a cream kind of color and i've got some glazing medium here um, that, you, that you can use for acrylic painting and um, i've got cadmium red it calls for cadmium red medium but i'm just using cadmium red because you can always obviously you can always just um, lighten or darken colors as you see fit um, or as the instructions tell you and then we've got mars black here titanium white so my palettes there and um, when i do the background which i think um i'll have to do the unbleached titanium across the whole of the i'll have to cover this so i'll just use this to do the ground of the painting and um, it's quicker and it gives a smoother result as well so there's not some, like brush marks and stuff you can and just get it on quickly wait for that to dry and then start the painting so um these palette knives i use to mix up my colors um it's not good to use your paint brushes to mix colors best to use palette knife so yeah this one's particularly good and what else before so i've got my water so i use two jugs of water one to initially rinse off most of the paint and then a second one for cleaner water to get the rest of it off basically so that's a little tip i always use two and um so yeah let me let's go through this first painting so when painting a complex scene with many parts it is tempting to try to render as much of the scene as possible in higher detail while this approach does not necessarily do me to failure another option would be to loosely represent the larger shapes in the scene and add a few well-placed details to finish the piece. For this project, you'll be painting large, simple shapes first and then adding small, tight details. It is often surprising to see how much finish you can achieve in a painting with just a few spots of detail. So, yeah. So, the first step in this painting is um, using the round brush paint the unbleached titanium over the whole surface to create a warm toned background this will help to balance the coolness of the greys you will be adding later allow to dry next mix a medium dark value grey with some mars black and unbleached titanium and loosely fill in the foreground with the silhouettes of the building so that is the first step so we will get to that right so i've mixed up my um unbleached titanium you don't want it to be too yellow so i've just added a tiny bit of the cadmium yellow to the titanium white and it's the perfect it's the perfect shade so it may not show that on the camera but um i think it actually does so yep i'm just gonna paint that all over and cover that board right so as you can see i've put my um unbleached titanium on as the ground and it i've put it on with this and as you can see it's very smooth so yeah i always recommend doing your putting on your ground with that also invest in a good painting apron i've had this for one for quite a few years and you can just wash it as well so yeah 
always good to have so you don't get paint all over your clothes what else oh this is the um so as your paints are sitting here they'll be drying out a bit um so it's you can use one of these Tombow spray misters just to keep your paints wet. Just put some water in and then just mist the paint to keep it from drying out um, if it's going to be sitting there for a while. So yeah, I'm going to come back when I have done the next step, which is to uh, let this dry and then put the, the building shapes in as per step one. Right, so ne next we are going to, I did I said I was going to come back, but I just wanted to show you the mixing. Um, so we've still got some unbleached titanium left and we're going to use that to mix with the Mars Black to make the grey for the buildings as per the instructions. So what I'll do is we'll just take a little bit of, um, yes, yeah, so we take about that much and then... You just use the pellet brush to kind of smush it in and then you just keep add, basically you just keep adding the um it's kind of a dark gray so i think maybe a little bit more actually let's smush that bit in so yeah you just push it down like that into the paint like that Sorry if my hand's shaking. I'm actually filming this on my phone because my camera battery has run out. And I um, just wanted to get started on the painting. So I think, yeah, I think that's about the right grey consistency. It looks darker in the video than it does. Only slightly. There's only a slight difference um, from the camera to the actual paint and the lighting's quite good in here at the moment uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to last for so I actually picked a good time to do the painting I always like to paint in natural light as well because you can see your color obviously you can see the paint colors better so like on my if I show you like the lot there I've got loads of light coming in from here and that's what you want lots of natural light coming in Right, so I think that, and then just gather that up a bit, like that, and then just get, get as much of the paint off as possible because I want to waste it off the knife, that's it, and then I'll just wipe the knife down with some kitchen towel to clean it off. Right, so let's get these buildings painted. For the oh for the buildings I'm going to use a round the round hog brush um, which I'll show you next. Right, so I'm I've roughly marked out with my brush. Um, you see the area here going down like that, up and there. Because then if you see the painting, I mean it does it does show you there the shape, but I always look at the finished image as well to get a picture of it. Um, so the you know the lighter shade at the back, and then in the for in the front you've got the darker shades. So that's going to be my sky area, and then I've just got a color, a color, paint this in. So you can be pretty. Um, you can't. You can kind of scrub this in like you know like that, basically, because you, you like as you see there, because you're going to be layering the paint. You don't have to get it all perfect and smooth, but to get these up here, get these edges up here. This thing I'm leaning on is a literal, um, it's like a book stand. I got it from a book, I think it's like Waterstones or somewhere. Um, and it's just plastic, so I've used this loads of times to do these little paintings. I just wipe it, it, all the paint comes off, just go and scrub it after. So yeah, I'm just going to fill this in, so you just scrub it in, and that's the good thing with the um, hog hair brushes, they're very durable, and you can kind of just, you know, use them, doing that won't ruin the brush. Scrub the paint into the canvas, 
like that. I mean, obviously not too hard. I'm not pressing too hard. So yeah, so I'm going to finish. So I'm going to do all this area and then I'll come back. Okay, so as you can see, step one is done. So the next step is, um, let's have a look here. So we're going to, let's focus this a little bit. So step two, add more Mars Black to the mixture. You can add more Mars Black to the mixture using step one and add a few simple elements to your painting. Loosely indicate the outline of the street as well as some trees and a car on the street on the side of the street there is no need to include any small details at this point just focus on establishing large shapes so let's get to that so yeah so we've got our gray here so we're gonna add some more mars black to it so i'm gonna do that and get back to you okay so i have done step two and this is like the outline of the car um, we can define all that. I know that looks a bit shitty, but we'll define that. And that's the shadows of the foreground of the buildings and trees. Um, may, uh, so this is all quite loose. So when I'm painting, I'm painting at the, with my hands at the end of the brush rather than near the tip of the brush and this just keeps everything loose because as you've noticed this is quite a loose painting it's not detailed and to, to keep the looseness of it and not go too defined you can just paint at the, with your hand at the end of the brush and control it from there and you'll get looser strokes um i think i need to soften this these lines up a little bit um because these are a bit more softer here where are we um yeah this one so yeah we just need to soften that up a bit there so yeah um yeah there isn't much gaps here but in the final thing there isn't really any gaps there either but yeah i think i need to loosen up these edges a bit more and then go to step three which is it says using full length mark full strength mars black deep in the shadows in the foreground you will need to darken the trees lining the street and the tires of the boot of the car you will also need to make a few short vertical strokes to represent the spotlights you will need to add the lights in step five so the spotlights i take it are the traffic lights there so let's get to it okie doke so we are up to step four now so I've done the Mars Black, pure Mars Black, and the next step is step four. Where are we? Step four. Let's just zoom out a little bit. So step four. Next, add a small amount of cadmium yellow light to the Mars Black you're using in step three. Use this green colour um, to colour the tree, the trees lining the street in the foreground because green is a complementary colour to red which will you be adding in the next step each colour will make the other colour appear more vibrant I mean in the finished piece you can't actually see details of tr like the green colour but suppose it's there so we're just going to do that um, and that will be kind of here and there because these the shadows represent like the trees light in the street and so yeah so you screen for the trees lying the street in the foreground so that's all we have to do for the next step i also added a bit of um because i noticed in the finished painting there was a bit of i mean that, that might be last i don't know but i just added some into the sky i might add a little bit more i'm not sure let's see how it how it looks when it is finished my car is looking a bit better now not perfect but it's a bit better i think you can tell it's a car <laughs> we'll see i think once we add the reds in um it's gonna make it all pop out a lot more so let's get cracking with that um green in the foreground for the trees also i was gonna i need to note that as i'm mixing the colors um because you're 
you're kind of mixing and then adding into what you've already mixed as you go along if you've noticed so instead of mixing over the whole amount that you've just mixed um, always leave some of the mixture as you're going along so it's going light to dark so that's what we started with with, with the ground color then we had the um, first layer for the buildings and then that's like the middle ground and then this is the foreground and then I'm going to add the cadmium yellow down here for the trees so that if you need to go back and you know tidy anything up or add anything your colours are still there and like I said you can use this to mist down which I'm going to do in a minute just mist down your paints to keep them wet <clears throat> so yeah so then the next mix in will be here so then we just keep mixing along like that and not mix over the colours that you've made because it will be very hard to go back and mix up the same shade that you mixed. So that's a little tip there for you. Right, so this is the green that's been mixed up with, I had some cadmium yellow at the top there so I just took some of that, mixed it with the, the light, um, what did I mix it with? I mixed it with a bit of the Mars Black and some of the lighter grey there so that is the green that I've managed to come up with so let's add that as the for the trees okay so as you can see I've added some green here into this the foreground here and what I've done is especially around here I used my fingers to kind of work the paint in to kind of blend it through um so it was it just sat better this is this one I did that a bit here but um, kind of made it more prominent on this side because there's not much going on here so I didn't want it to be too faint so you can you kind of get the idea of what's going on there so this is kind of like giving an impression of what's going on here this this way of painting is you're giving the impression of what's going on you're not actually painting much detail so I mean, you know, you can you can add more detail if you want to, but obviously the point of this exercise is to concentrate on the shapes rather than the smaller details. So anyway, that was step four. So the next step is um, step five, and that is to complete the painting, switch the smaller round brush and cadmium red light to add the red spot light and the brake lights of the cars fill in the sky with a glaze of titanium white and um, I've done all that already add add extra definition to the details in the foreground so what we need to do here is add some more definition to the car so add in the red add some definition to the car add some definition to this bit here as you can see there's some bit of um, definition there so we need to add in some definition there straighten out the car and do the road markings do some road markings there and then that will be it so only and you know because I was filming this it took longer than it longer than it would have if I wasn't filming but it's still a pretty quick painting so let's do step five let's finish up this painting and we can assess the finished result right so we have now finished the painting so I've added all the definition into the car made that kind of like there's a car going next to it and yes yeah, indeed little bits of highlights of the buildings and back there I'm pretty pleased with it you know it's just a simple painting I felt I felt like it was quite a challenge because of using different shades of greys and blacks and negative colours basically but I like the fact that the the use of the red that pops at the end to give it that you know those details really bring the painting to life so yeah I think I learnt from that I hope that you guys learnt something from that and I am it's now two o'clock so we started filming this at 11 but then I had to wait for the um, the ground to dry so um, 
I think I left that for about half an hour. Um, so yeah, it didn't take too long, including the filming. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the second painting. But I'm not going to go through it because this video is going to be very long. Otherwise, I'm not going to go through it in like detail like I did this one. But um, let's just run through. I feel like this one's going to be quite quick as well. So, And I want to get this done probably before like 3 o'clock. So let's, because I've got other things I need to do today. So we're going to do, the next one I'm going to do is a simplified, simplify it, ugh, I can't even talk, simplifying a landscape. Also, I need to do some lunch. Simplifying some landscape, snow skiing, oh my God, I can't even talk. Simplifying a landscape, snow scene. <laughs> so anyway, so the materials are here again and we've got a colour palette of yellow okra, cadmium yellow light, colbert blue, mars black, titanium white and unbleached titanium. So we've got similar colours but we're adding in the colbert blue which I'm not sure if I have. I do have some blue so even if I don't have colbert blue I'll have a blue to use. So I should have colbert blue actually because I've done some of these paintings which use it. Um, so this, uh, let me read this, painting an outdoor scene that contains multiple detailed parts can be a daunting task. Yes, it can. It's helpful to simplify the many complex details found in nature into a more cohesive, un cohesive, unified patterns. For this exercise, imagine the painting split into two distant parts, the foreground, which is in the shadow, and the middle ground, which is bathed in sunlight. You will use simplified shapes rather than details to represent the trees and snow. So yeah, that is the, those are the steps because I won't be going through them in much detail, but those are the steps and what I'll be doing and then I will come back with um, what I've managed to do. So I'm going to um, switch everything up ready to, that's the, my last, our last look at this painting. So I'm going to switch everything up ready to do the next painting, get some lunch on and get this painting done and then that will be the end of my painting session for today and then um, hopefully I'll have this video up shortly so I will see you back when I've done this painting okay so I finished the second piece um, which was a very simple snow scene and so this is the finished one on the book but as you can see I changed a lot of it so I was just experimenting a little bit with um, just some more, like what I was doing in the other painting, I kind of carried that over to this painting and just did a little, worked into it a little bit more. It's still very simple, it's still just concentrated on shapes, um, but yeah, so I mean... I, I did what the steps said as well. So I, as long, I think as long as you follow the steps as well, it's not telling you to do it exactly as that painting. They're finished, the finished painting, but it's supposed to turn out, you know, it's supposed to be um, what it says, a simplified landscape. So yeah, so that's the end of this video. And um, I'm going to clean up all of this um, mess. So I'll show you the next one that needs to be done so hopefully I can get the next one filmed next Friday but this one looks quite good because it's a bit more detailed so this one is massing in nature this was an introduction to massing basically um so this is going taking it a bit further so yeah I'd actually I actually looking forward to doing that one so hopefully I can get that done next week and I'll film that but thank you for um, joining me for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.